Hey guys, welcome back. So yesterday I pretty much redid my entire garden plans for this year. I wanted to kind of break down everything that's going on here just in case it helps you out in any way. I'm a very, very visual person and unless I do this, I will have absolutely no idea what I'm doing even though I've researched for months. I also have a chart here of all of my notes just so everything is right there when I need it along with everything else. When I first did this with you guys in December, it was a video called Five Steps to Planting Your Garden from Seed. And when I did that, I did map out my entire garden then. But since then, I've actually added quite a bit to the garden. Every single year, I think I have a plan and then a few months go by and I've added quite a bit more things. So I've added strawberries, I've added blueberries, I've added chamomile, a bunch of other different flowers, I've added radishes, and I'm sure there's a few other things on there that I'm not mentioning, but over here, I have a list of every single thing I plan on growing this year. Also, I have companion planting. So I have never done companion planting before. This is something I am going to be doing completely new this year. I actually got a book that was having scientific um, things that backed up companion planting, and I found it really interesting. So last year, you may have recalled, I had one hell of a time with hornworms and also, hold on, what's it called? The yellow striped army worm. Both of those, oh my gosh, I was picking off so many by hand daily because I do organic gardening and then I also couldn't get my hands on neem oil. Either way, last year was a nightmare when it came to those things. And one of the things that I've learned with tomatoes is having marigolds and basil planted around them is supposed to help with that. So that's going to be kind of an experiment this year. And this kind of breaks down all of that. I'll give you guys some up close views, but this also shows me exactly how things are laid out in the garden. These little flaps here show things I'm planting in the early spring that I can harvest by end of May, early June, and then I can plant out some other things after. Um, a lot of these beds, like my bed up here is my onion bed and a few other things, and that's actually going to be changed out in about July. So this will be ever evolving. This is pretty much the game plan though, um, up until about June. Some of these things will stay in place though, like the tomatoes will stay in place. My cucumber, melon, and loofah tunnel will be in place pretty much the entire year. That's one thing I'm really, really excited about. But either way, I wanted to just kind of fill you guys in on how my plans have changed. I've gotten a few more garden beds, as you can probably see right here. It's going to be an exciting year to say the least. Today is absolutely beautiful though. So I'm actually going to get these seedlings outside because it's barely windy. Our high today is supposed to be about 70 again, so it is the perfect day. If you don't know what hardening off is, um, stay tuned. I will see you outside. I had to go inside and change. I was already breaking a sweat from bringing out these guys. I did not realize that there was going to be no wind today, but I must say it feels absolutely amazing to be wearing a tank top. I actually hope I get a little bit of sun today because it's been winter and I am pasty and I really want just a little bit of sun. It feels so nice. Either way though, so reasons why you may want to harden off your seedlings, there's actually quite a bit. For me, I live in an environment that is super windy. So if I did not harden off my seedlings at all, they would just be exposed to the elements and you really don't want that. You really want them to be strong enough to withstand wind and rain and whatever else might be able to be thrown their way. There's obviously some elements you can't control, but by doing this, you really do help their chances. I did go ahead and pull my hoop house back over. You do not need to do this. I'm only doing this because I'm trying to eliminate maybe how many bugs would be back in the house because obviously these are going to be outside most of the day with me. One thing you do want to know is when you are hardening off your plants, don't leave them outside too long the first day. So for example, I'm only going to be leaving Leaving these guys out here for about three or four hours today about the length of time I'm going to be out here doing garden activities um, it isn't really windy today so I could actually probably leave them out a little bit longer but they are gonna get better sunlight than the lighting they would have downstairs so uh, there's a few things I need to get done today actually there's a lot I need to get done but I don't think I'm gonna get it all done today I got my compost last week if you did not see my husband actually built me strawberry beds over the weekend that I will show you in a second but I do need to get a few of my garden beds completely ready I'm going to be direct sowing some seedlings like snow peas into the ground here um, in a few weeks. So there's a lot to do. It's March. Um, it's definitely time to get everything set in stone. So 
let's do some projects. One other thing I forgot to mention that you may have saw me do is I actually watered these guys once I brought them out. When you bring your plants outside, make sure they are well hydrated. They're about to have their first day of sunshine and they're gonna be thirsty, so remember that. This may look like nothing, but look, the hyssop is starting to re-sprout. That is really, really exciting. So if you don't know, hyssop is absolutely amazing for bees. I have had it in my garden for four years and I will always have a place for it in my garden. So if you've been around since last year, you would have known that I actually cut off the bases of my plants and I left the root systems in the ground. There's a few reasons for that. One, the root systems on these plants were very, very deep and they were really, really hard to get out of the ground. I also learned last year that when you do this and you overwinter the roots, what happens is the microbes and the worms that live in the soil, what they do is actually feed on these root systems during winter, which will actually allow you to have better soil and it's a lot easier just to take straight out the ground. Like I haven't even pulled this straight up. Like I'm sure I could rock this. This one's bigger, but I mean that that's really easy and you can see that there's not a lot of root system left, which is really cool. So one other thing I did last fall was I heavily mulched all of my beds with fall leaves. And I'm actually really impressed. So when you pull back the leaves, look how rich and dark that soil is. It is completely ready to go. I went inside to grab some yogurt and granola. So days like this in Kansas don't happen very often where we don't even have like a slight breeze. I feel like now it's starting to have a slight breeze, but that entire time I was doing that, it was so still and I forget sometimes because honestly, I hate how windy it does get here. But on days like this, when it is really still, I just remember how hard it is to like truly do stuff outside. Like it's always 10 times harder when you don't have a nice breeze. I don't know if you can see or not, but over my shoulder there is a cattle panel that's into a trellis. Right there I'm gonna have a few more trellises and I'm gonna have a tunnel. And that's where my cucumbers, my loofah, and my charente melons are. Charente is just like a fancy cantaloupe, uh, to be completely honest. But I have to get a few more cattle panels for over there and then this is actually going to be one of our biggest projects this year my husband has to build garden beds for right there where everything can obviously grow one of these days i may attempt to build something but honestly that is like so up his alley that i just let him do that for me so thank you husband if you are watching this and speaking of him building things these are the strawberry beds that he actually built last weekend so they are just attached to our fence which is actually pretty handy i have 20 bare root strawberry plants coming here probably in like two or three weeks so i need to get these guys filled too <laughs> So this space here that I am sitting in last year was my fall space. 
this year coming up, this is going to be where majority of my tomatoes are going to be. And I have one more thing I have not gotten completely harvested out of here yet. So I have these carrots. It may not look like much, but there are still carrots underneath here. So I actually need to go through and just pull these up. Then I think that will be it before I take the seedlings back inside. Um, this whole thing has to be completely rearranged. I have to get all of these wood chips out and all of that. And honestly, I'm going to end up running out of day before I can really dig into that project. So I'm not even going to start today because this is a big project. So I actually got more carrots than I was thinking I was going to get. I actually harvested carrots all fall and winter. It was actually really cool. Actually, I have a few in here that are really good size. I didn't thin them out enough, and that was my problem, and that's why some of these are still kind of little. But this gives me a lot of excitement for this upcoming year. I will always have carrots in my fall garden because if you don't know, when plants that are supposed to get cold get cold, they actually store their sugars in their root. So these are some of the best tasting carrots I've ever had in my entire life. Either way, before before I take these guys inside, there was something I wanted to mention. So I have started seedlings for the last four years now. This is year four, and I have never had starts look this amazing. So it just goes to show you, the last three years, I have not been using enough light. I've always kind of speculated I didn't, but I wasn't really sure. These starts look absolutely amazing. They're actually way more ahead at this age than they were in previous years, so I almost wish I would have started my tomatoes and peppers just a few weeks later, but honestly, I was going off of my experiences from previous years. Kind of just goes to show you, you can change one single element and you can get completely different result. Always keep that in mind. If you're having issues with some leggy seedlings, you may need to add more light. So I wanted to give that a mention. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys all next time. Bye!